Welcome to this video on multi-step redox titration calculations. We're looking here at how can you uh, find out the properties. We're talking there about things like concentration, uh, um, mass, etc. How can the properties of solutions, uh, mass of solute that would be, uh, that are not directly titrated be calculated? So in a typical one-step titration calculation, the substance you're analyzing uh, is directly titrated against another uh, compound. It might be an acid with a base or something like that. Um, but here we've got situations where we're not directly titrating um, against another an, um, the substance you're analyzing. The substance you're analyzing is not involved in the titration directly. Um, and this is typically coming from an iodine thiosulfate titration procedure, but it doesn't have to be, and that's why I've just called it multi-step redox titration calculations. You might get questions that are about different types of procedures, and it's the same sort of idea. And what you're going to be looking for, and I'll explain exactly what this term means uh, in a moment, is this idea of what's called a linking reagent. Um, and we're going to see that they're the key. And it, it works for a two-step procedure, like we're going to see, but also you can have multiple linking reagents, um, in a three or four or five or however many step you want procedure. So let's do an example, um, which is working out the concentration of an iron three solution. Uh, so we've been given some information about an iron three solution reacting with an excess of potassium iodide, um, and that produced some iodine. And so that's this reaction here. And that liberated iodine uh, was titrated against some sodium thiosulfate, which is a reaction with the thiosulfate ion, and this is how much was required to reach the end point. So we've got to calculate the concentration of the original iron 3 plus solution. So first thing to do in all these types of calculations um, is to actually input the information we've got in the question beneath the equations. So if we look at what we've got about the iron, we have got its volume, uh, and I'm going to switch that to decimeters cubed just by multiplying by 10 to the power minus 3. So we've got 10 times 10 to the minus 3 in there. Um, and that's pretty much all we know about that first reaction. Um, and then we know that in the other reaction, I'll just give myself a bit of space, uh, we've got a certain concentration of sodium thiosulfate. Uh, and that thiosulfate was 0 0.1 mole per decimeter cube. We've got a certain volume, which I'm going to again write in decimeters cubed by just multiplying by 10 to the power minus 3, which is the same as dividing by 1,000. Um, and that's all the information I've got. And I need to work out the concentration in moles per decimeter cubed of the iron 3 plus. So that's my sort of target that I want to try and find out. Now, how am I going to do that? Well, the second thing I would do after I've written in all the information from the question uh, is to work out the number of moles of something now I can't work it out for anything for iron 3 plus, but I can for sodium thiosulfate because I've got concentration and volume. So I'm going to write this beneath. Now with these sorts of unstructured calculations, I think it pays, rather than writing all the numbers in these tables, it would be better to try and work it out um, and to write a series of lines of working. And in those lines, you need to state the quantity. So I'm going to work out number of moles, n. You need to state which species you're calculating that for. So that's the thiosulfate ion. The formula you use, concentration times volume, and then the working. So 0.1 for the concentration, the volume is 17.6 times 10 to the minus 3. And then the final answer, 1.76 times 10 to the minus 3, and a unit, which is MOL. Quantity, species, formula, working, answer, unit. Now, the next thing we want to try and do is to link that to uh, the number of moles of iron because that is if we can work out moles of iron we can use this formula in reverse to work out concentration so eventually we're going to want and I wouldn't necessarily write this out in this way um, but you're going to want to find out the concentration of Fe3 plus and you're going to do that I'll just give myself a bit more space you're going to do concentration of Fe3 plus uh, and you're going to do that by doing number of moles divide by volume, you've got the volume and you want the number of moles, but currently we don't know uh, the number of moles in there um, and so we need to somehow work that out. So this is what's coming next. 
Um, so how we're going to work out uh, the number of moles of um, iron 3 plus. So the way I do this is just to use a little table. Um, so I want to try and use both of these equations to get from moles of thiosulfate uh, to moles of iron 3 plus. But we need to be a little bit cautious here about how we do that. Um, and the way we're going to do it is by using what's called a linking reagent. What we need to realize here is that the thiosulfate reacts with iodine and that iodine is the very same iodine that was produced by this first reaction here. Now because we used an excess of potassium iodide, this reagent here is in excess. That means that the limiting reagent is the iron and that is therefore going to produce a certain fixed number of moles of iodine. And we can just keep track of these ratios in a little table uh, which I'm going to show you over here. So we're going to think about um, iron 3 plus first and iron 3 plus is related to iodine and that iodine is related in this second equation to thiosulfate. So if we think about the two different steps separately, in step number one we've got iron 3 plus which is related to um, uh, iodine. And two moles of Fe3 plus react to form one mole of iodine. Now in step two, we've got that one mole of iodine reacts with, oh, don't need that over there. There's no iron three plus there, oops two moles of sodium thiosulfate. So if we write this in now overall, what we're going to get out of that, this number is the same. And so if we read it out in our heads, we're going to say two moles of Fe2 plus, uh, Fe3 plus, react to form one mole of iodine. And that one mole of iodine, so we go from there to there to there to there, to there to there will react to form two moles of sodium thiosulfate. So provided that this number here in the middle is the same, so this must be the same, we can just sort of add these ratios together, blend them together to get this overall ratio. And what that shows us here is that two of Fe3 plus eventually reacts with two moles of thiosulfate. So if we come down here to our main workings, we're going to see the number of moles of Fe3 plus, which is what we want to find, is equal to the number of moles of thiosulfate. They react in a two to two ratio, which is the same as a one to one ratio. And so we can quickly say that this is going to be the same number. And we can stick that number down here. And from that, we can work out what this is going to be. The powers of 10 to the minus 3 cancel. And we've got a concentration of 0.176 moles per decimeter cubed. So summarizing uh, this procedure of calculation, so first step, you're going to write down information given in the question uh, under the equations uh, that you've been given. Then you're going to calculate the amount of, in moles of the known substance. And that is usually sodium thiosulfate uh, because we tend to use a, a standard solution of that. So this is usually uh, thiosulfate, but it's essentially the substance that you know concentration and volume for or perhaps you might know a mass that you can work out um, the number of moles from that. Um, and then you're going to find the amount in moles of the unknown substance and there you're going to use the linking reagent. And in these iodine thiosulfate titrations uh, it's going to be iodine. Um, and that is always going to be produced in the first step and used in the next. And then if you're going to, you've got more than one uh, step, then you're going to have to find another reagent that's produced in the second and used in the third and so on and so forth. 
and then you're going to combine more ratios. You don't have to use one of the tables like I used in the previous slide, you can just sort of talk it through, um, but it, it's a useful way. Um, and then finally, once you've got the amount of moles, you can work out the properties of the unknown as required. That could be a concentration, maybe the mass of a solute, a molar mass of a compound, and so on and so forth.